This morning at 1.50 UTC, something happened on the sun's surface that changed everything. After more than a week of unusual silence, our star erupted with a force we haven't seen in months. The blast triggered radio blackouts across the Pacific. But here's what has solar physicists concerned. This wasn't just any flare. It came from a region that shouldn't even exist yet. And what's rotating into view in the next 48 hours could make this look like a warm-up. Welcome back. You remember the Apollo era? You watched the sun's power firsthand during the great auroras of the 1970s and 80s? You understand that our star isn't the stable, predictable beacon most people imagine? It's a nuclear furnace with a temper. For the past 10 days, solar activity has been unusually quiet. Low flare counts, minimal disruption, the kind of calm that makes veteran space weather forecasters nervous. Because with the sun, silence doesn't mean peace. It means something's building. Then, early this morning, the silence broke. What erupted from the sun's edge wasn't supposed to be there. Let me show you why that matters. At 1.50 a.m. Universal Time, December 27th, NOAA's GOES-19 satellite recorded an M5.1 class solar flare that's moderate by classification, but significant by timing. The eruption came from sunspot region AR4323, a fresh active region just rotating onto the sun's southeast limb. Here's the first unusual detail. We're seeing this region before it's fully visible. Think about that. The flare was powerful enough to be detected while still mostly hidden behind the sun's edge. What we're observing is just the beginning. The blast released intense X-rays and extreme ultraviolet radiation. Within minutes, radio operators across the Coral Sea west of New Caledonia lost contact, an R2-level blackout, moderate disruption but widespread, high-frequency communications, the kind aircraft and ships depend on, went silent. But this morning's flare tells only half the story. NOAA forecasters have identified something else. Towering prominences, massive arches of plasma rising from the sun's north pole. These structures are visible in the 304 Angstrom wavelength, revealing activity on the sun's far side, activity we can't see directly yet. And that far side activity, it has a history. A history that could repeat itself in the next 48 hours. Here's what has solar physicists paying close attention. Two regions that were active just a week ago. AR4294 and AR4296 are rotating back into Earth-facing view. When these regions were last visible, they produced 17 and 2 M-class flares respectively. 17 M-class flares from a single region in one rotation, that's not normal activity, that's a solar region in overdrive. Now those same regions are coming around the sun's limb, potentially even more energetically charged than before. Combined with this morning's M5.1 eruption from the newcomer AR4323, we're looking at a convergence, multiple active regions all facing Earth, all capable of significant output. Solar cycle 25 has surprised everyone. We're past the predicted maximum, yet activity remains elevated, higher than historical models suggested, more intense than the last solar cycle. This isn't your grandfather's solar maximum, though he'd recognize the signs. The 1859 Carrington event. The great aurora of 1989 that knocked out Quebec's power grid. These weren't aberrations, they were demonstrations of what a truly active sun can do, and were overdue. Which brings us to the question nobody at NOAA is asking publicly. What if this is just the opening act? This morning's M5.1 flare pushed solar activity from low to high in a single event. That's significant. But it's the setup that matters more than the event itself. AR4294 and AR4296 rotating into view. AR4323 already active on the limb. Far side prominences suggesting additional regions we haven't cataloged yet. We're entering a window where multiple capable regions will face Earth simultaneously. The last time we saw a similar configuration was October 2003. The Halloween storms. Some of you remember those? Aurora visible as far south as Texas. Satellites damaged. Communications disrupted globally. We have better monitoring now. Better prediction models. Better infrastructure protection. But we also have more to lose. More satellites. More dependent systems. More infrastructure vulnerable to geomagnetic storms. Here's my question for you. Do you think we're adequately prepared for a Carrington-level event today? We have the technology we didn't have in 1859, but we also have the vulnerabilities they never imagined. What's your assessment? Share your thoughts in the comments. I'll be monitoring NOAA's updates closely. If AR4294 and AR4296 produce the kind of activity they showed last week, we could see significant auroral displays in the coming days, possibly visible at lower latitudes than usual. Thank you for watching, and remember, the sun's silence was temporary. What comes next could be spectacular. Until next time,